Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the renal function test. So in the previous video, if you've not seen it, I'll drop the link in the description box for you to see it. We were able to see that the renal function test is one of the tests carried out in chemical pathology. So today we'll be treating it extensively. And it's the first step in evaluating patients suspected in having kidney dysfunction. And we can't discuss the renal function test without knowing the physiology of the kidneys and the functions of the kidneys. The kidneys are vital organs in our body and its functional unit is the nephron and each kidney contains approximately 1 million nephrons. That's a whole lot. These nephrons have renal corpuscles which contain glomerulus, the Bowman capsule, and renal tubules that helps to facilitate all of the processes of urine formation and excretion. And the nephrons filter blood, they reabsorb essential substances and excrete waste products into urine. The kidney is functioned by filtering plasma and removing substances from the filtrate depending on the needs of our body. And aside formation of urine, the kidneys plays vital roles in the body, such as homeostasis, by excreting waste products like urea, uric acid, creatinine, bilirubin, also by excreting harmful chemical substances such as toxins, drugs, heavy metals, and the rest of them, and also through electrolyte balance and maintenance of acid-base balance of the body. It also helps to eliminate metabolic acids like sulfuric and phosphoric acids. Another function of the kidney is that it helps in hematopoietic function by secreting erythropoietin, which is an important stimulating factor for erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is the formation of red blood cells, and it also secretes thrombopoietin that stimulates the production of thrombocytes. Also, the kidney helps to regulate arterial blood pressure, and this happens in two ways. That's by regulating the volume of extracellular fluid and also through renin-angiotensin mechanism. Urine is formed in the kidney, and there are several factors that affect this whole process of urine formation. There are factors like temperature, drugs, climate, age, and even conditions like pregnancy. Urine analysis is usually done under two major groups, which are the physical and biochemical examination. These ones are the major examinations done during urine analysis. We also, there is also um, the microscopic examination. So in physical examination of urine, the color, volume, specific gravity and the pH of the urine is assessed. Normally the color of a urine is amber. However, the presence of entirely different colors may be indicators for certain health conditions. Let's see these various colors. In a colorless urine indicates overhydration or an excessive alcohol intake or even diabetes mellitus or insipidus. It could also be something as slight as nervousness. Why a milky color could suggest the presence of an infection or excessive fat in the body. A yellowish orange color indicates malaria or fever, while a greenish urine suggests liver dysfunction like jaundice. We also have dark brown color and brownish black color. And it's important to note that when you leave urine to stand for a particular period of time, it could also cause darkening of the urine as a result of the conversion of urobilinogen to urobilin. Food and drugs are also contributing factors of urine discoloration. The pH of the urine is also examined during physical examination. And the average urine pH of a normal human is between 6 and 8 on the pH scale. And it measures the acidity or alkalinity of the urine. An acidic urine is below 4.6, while an alkaline urine is above 8 on the pH scale. 
So another parameter for physical examination in urinalysis is the urine volume. Average 24 hour urine output in a healthy ad adult is 1200 to 1500 mils. That is 1.2 to 1.5 liters while the night volume is about 400 mil and certain conditions may result to a decrease or an increase of urine formation in the body so a volume greater than 2000 mil is polyuria while that the one that is below 500 mil is called oligouria while a complete absence that's when there is totally no urine formation in the body is called anuria so lastly, we'll see specific gravity as a parameter for physical examination in urinalysis and there is an instrument called urinometer. That one is used to check the specific gravity of urine. So what's specific gravity? Specific gravity is a test that evaluates the concentrating ability of the kidneys and it depends on the concentration of various solutes in the urine. <coughs> solutes are electrolytes urea ammonia and glucose and it ranges from 1.007 to 1.010 in an healthy individual and high specific gravity could result from high solutes as in conditions like diabetes mellitus or nephritis and low specific gravity could be due to and excessive water intake and cases of polyuria remember we said polyuria is when um, the urine formation is greater than 2000 mil that's polyuria so and there are different interfering factors of specific gravity it's usually higher in early morning urine sample that's the first urine when you wake up and whenever there is an excessive loss of water, especially during hot weather or in a hot environment. The pH of urine, specific gravity, urine volume and the color are various parameters used for just the physical examination of renal function tests. In our next video, we'll be looking at the biochemical examination and microscopic examination. So guys, thank you for watching to this point. If you've not liked this video, do well to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell if you haven't. Stay tuned and till I come your way next time. Until then, stay curious and keep learning.